और अच्छा डेटा आ गया सारा क्या आपने उस दिन क्या ऑर्डर किया है नेक्स्ट टाइम वैन यू गो टू द प्लेस एंड द लेडी कम्स टू यू एंड सेज आपके नंबर से तो सामने देखा गया लास्ट टाइम इसको स्टेक पसंद थी राइट इमीजिएटली आता है सो यूल सिंपली से वुड यू हैव लाइक टू हैव द स्टेक सेम वन और यू वॉन्ट टू ट्राई समथिंग न्यू राइट तो आप देखें कि जो बंदा बैठा है ये सुन रहा है वो कह रहे हैं यार ये इतना ज़्यादा मेरा केयर करते हैं कि इनको ये भी पता है कि लास्ट टाइम मैंने खाया क्या था ठीक है सो ये ये कुछ अब हर चीज़ में टेक्निक्स हैं सिंगापुर एयरपोर्ट के ऊपर उन्होंने आ, किसी भी मुल्क में जब एंटर होते हैं तो आप अच्छा सी की एक रिलेशनशिप में आपको बता दूँ आपके घरों में भी कस्टमर रिलेशनशिप रिलेशनशिप जो मैनेजमेंट होती है आपके पेरेंट्स करते थे आपके पेरेंट्स के घरों में सब याद याद करें कि कितने लोग आपके पेरेंट्स के घरों में आया करते थे ये सारी चीज़ कॉमन होगी मोस्ट ऑफली मेरे घर जो है ना हर दिन कोई ना कोई मेहमान आता था रिलेशनशिप्स थी अब क्या हो गया अब हमारे घर बंदे नहीं आते हैं कम आते हैं क्योंकि उन उन लोगों ने अपने ख़ानदान के अंदर भी रिलेशनशिप्स को मैनेज किया हुआ था सिंगापुर एयरपोर्ट की मैं मिसाल दूंगा कि आप किसी भी एयरपोर्ट पर जाते हैं तो ज़रा वो बंदा बैठा होता है और आपको डर ही लग रहा होता है वीज़ा देगा एंट्री नहीं देगा ये और इतना आप सफ़र करके आए होते हैं तो उन्होंने अपने को कहा कि पहले आप जो भी आएगा ना उन एजेंट्स को कहा कि आप इसको वेलकम करेंगे वेलकम हाउ आर यू अब आप एक सोचें जो बंदा एक हज़ार दो हज़ार विजिटर्स को डील कर रहा है एयरलाइन के अपनी ड्यूटी के दौरान तो वो हर एक को ये कहेगा तो वो क्या मुश्किल हो जाएगा बहुत मुश्किल हो जाएगा फिर उन्होंने लिख के लगा दिया हेलो वेलकम टू दिस 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 अब आपको पता है जो भी बंदा आ रहा होता है पढ़ नहीं रहा होता इधर उधर उसको होता है कि यार मैं यहाँ से काउंटर से क्रॉस करूँ उसका भी फ़ायदा नहीं हुआ तो उन्होंने सिर्फ क्या किया उन्होंने की किया ये कि उन्होंने वहाँ पे एक स्वीट्स रख दी टॉफीज तो उस बंदे ने यहाँ कस्टमर से जो एजेंट है वो बैठा उससे पता क्या करता था जब आता था कोई दैट सेट नो वर्ड स्पोकन दैट सेट प्रोसेसिंग योर डॉक्यूमेंट्स तो एक देखें कि आपने अगेन कस्टमर रिलेशनशिप किस तरह बिल्डअप कर ली राइटी हाँ ऐसे लेकिन यह कि बस इसमें आपको ये देखना है कि किस तरह आप एक रिलेशनशिप को डेवलप करते हैं जिस तरह कि आपके घर के अंदर एक रिलेशनशिप होती है ना तो आपको कस्टमर भी एज अ ट्रीट करें कि एज अ फैमिली मेम्बर्स हैं तो अगर इफ़ यू फॉलो दोज गाइडलाइन ना जनरली तो दोनों एंड्स के ऊपर मैंने इसीलिए कहा परस्पेक्टिव में कि जो बंदा बेच रहा है उसको ये शायद आइडिया ही नहीं है कि अगर मैं इस बंदे की डिश रिप्लेस करके ले आता हूँ खाने की मैं एग्जांपल दी थी और कहता हूँ तो अगली दफ़ा मैं उस रेस्टोरेंट में जाऊँगा अगर उसने ना की तो मैं कभी भी उस रेस्टोरेंट में नहीं जाऊँगा ऐसे आपने नोट किया होगा आपने खास तौर पे कि आप एरियाज़ पे भी डिपेंड करता है शॉपिंग के आई हैव सीन वुमेन शॉपिंग इन पिशावर आई हैव सीन इन इस्लामाबाद एंड आई हैव सीन इन लाहौर आप जरा कल्चरली डिफरेंस देखें कि इस्लामाबाद में आप करेंगे ना एक चीज़ देखेंगे दो चीज़ें देखेंगे तीसरे के ऊपर आपका जब वो बंदा है ना वो चिड़ चिड़ जाता है वो आपसे डिफरेंट बिहेवियर हो जाता है इफ़ यू गो टू लाहौर ना उनकी और लैंग्वेज है आओ जी बाजी बैठो तो अनुशा चौड़िया से चाय मंगवा वो इस तरह डील करते हैं ठीक है लाहौर में वो आप पचास चीज़ें देखेंगे ना ना लेंगे वो कुछ नहीं कहेंगे ये वहाँ का वो एटीट्यूड है एरिया का पिशावर का नहीं पिशावर का नहीं नहीं वो बाजी आए बैठे बहन क्या चाहिए मतलब उनको वो रिलेशनशिप इस तरह बना लेते हैं कि आपके बहन के साथ तो मतलब सर ये हर जगह में जो 
एग्जैक्टली सो पर्सन टू पर्सन और ये ऐसी चीज़ नहीं है कि जो कि इम्प्रूव ना हो सके जिन लोगों को बिल्कुल नहीं आती कस्टमर सर्विस कोई बात नहीं उनको छोटी इस तरह मिसालें दें हम ट्रेनिंग्स करवाते हैं प्रोग्राम्स की तो एंड ऑफ द डे वो वापस जाते हैं कस्टमर सर्विस में उनका बिहेवियर चेंज हुआ होता है ये चीज़ें सीखी जा सकती हैं ठीक है ना बी हम्बल बी पोलाइट वो सारी चीज़ें यार जो आपका उसने एक कंक्लूड किया कि जो एक किलो की कमोडिटी वहाँ से हमें मिलती है ना वो एक किलो की कमोडिटी जो हमें पंजाब या पुलिस में मिलती है इससे बहुत फर्क है ये उसने वो पता नहीं चावलों को कह रही थी कि एक किलो चावल के तीन क्लास जो है वो वहाँ पे थे और यहाँ पे ढाई क्लास है एक किलो वही एक किलो ये तो बेमानी वाली बात है ना कुछ बेमानी लोग करते हैं इसी तरह जब हम कस्टमर वहाँ पे जाते हैं ना सर तो एक एक आध दफा कोशिश करता है स्मार्ट करने के लिए जो दुकानदार है वो मतलब फ्रूट डालेगा तो दो चार दिन में हल्के फुल्के डाल चीजें डालेगा तो क्वान्टिटी कम रखेगा पैसों में यूज तरह कर देगा लेकिन अगर आपका एक दफा जिस आप उस कस्टमर हमेशा उस दुकानदार के बदल जाता है तो आपको वो बिल्कुल ब्लाइंडली ट्रस्ट कर रहा हूँ एग्जैक्टली ये मुझे दे रहा है ना पूरा ही होगा एग्जैक्टली जिस समय एक और आपको एडिंग एक्स्ट्रा टेक्स्ट में वो दर्जन के माल्टों वाली बताई थी कि वो कहता है दर्जन मेरे तेरह होते हैं सो डिपेंड करता है कि आपको कितना ट्रस्ट है कि वो ट्रस्ट डेवलप करना पड़ता है कि आप चीज़ें कुछ स्टोर ऐसे हैं फॉर एग्जांपल एब आप स्टोर है एफ सेवन में वो उनका उनका ये है कि वो जो चीज़ देते हैं ताज़ा दे रहे हैं मरी करियाना टाइप भी शॉप्स हैं सो देर आर मैनी एग्जाम्पल वेयर पीपल गो मोर बिकॉज दे सी के वहाँ पर हमें प्योर चीज़ें मिलती हैं तो ज़ाहिर है ये कस्टमर रिलेशनशिप ये नहीं होती है कि आप ख़राब चीज़ अच्छे मुँह से बेचते हैं उसका चीज़ का अच्छा होना भी ज़रूरी है ना वो दैट इज़ ऑल्सो इम्पॉर्टेंट अच्छा आपने देखा ये कस्टमर रिलेशनशिप की जब मैं बात कर रहा हूँ तो इसमें कितनी वेरिड चीज़ें हैं ठीक है ना एक एलिमेंट नहीं है हर तरह से चीज़ का ठीक होना ज़रूरी है बंदे का ठीक होना ज़रूरी है एक दफ़ा कस्टमर लूज़ कर दें तो कभी नहीं आएगा आज का जो लेक्चर का जो सेकंड पार्ट है ये मैंने आपको एक केस स्टडी दी है यूनाइटेड ब्रेक गिटार्स की ठीक है पहले आप स्टूडेंट्स को तो नहीं पहले बताई थी ये नहीं है यूनाइटेड ब्रेक ब्रेक्स गिटार अब हमारे ख्याल में एक बंदा जो होता है वो इनसिग्निफिकेंट होता है और हमने एक ये आदमी था कॉर्नल अभी इसका मैं वीडियो भी आपको दिखाऊंगा पूरी इसने यूनाइटेड एयरलाइन के ऊपर ट्रैवल किया ठीक है अब उसने अपना गिटार जो था ना उसके अंदर बुक करा दिया बैगेज में जब बैगेज से उसको गिटार मिला तो गिटार ब्रेक हुई हुई थी उसकी स्ट्रिंग उसने कंप्लेन कर दी कि जी मेरी ये कंप्लेन है कि मेरा ये गिटार है और इसमें से ये प्रॉब्लम हो गई है एयरलाइंस जो टिपिकली उन्होंने इसको एज ए नॉर्मल कंप्लेंट ले लिया हर कोई नॉर्मल लेता है कि ई मेल आई है इस पर आंसर क्या लिखना है तो उसने एनीवे anyway, दो तीन दफा लेटर्स लिखे तो उसके जवाब वही गोल मोल जिस तरह कस्टमर सर्विस के होता है जी कैन बी मिस्टेक नहीं मिस्टेक ना तो उन्होंने उसकी जो कंप्लेन को ना कोई इंपॉर्टेंस नहीं दी यूनाइटेड एयरलाइन बहुत बड़ी एयरलाइन है उस अच्छा ये था सिंगर ये रात को बैठा इसने कहा था मैं गाना लिख देता हूँ यूनाइटेड ब्रेक्स गिटार्स ठीक है उसने अब ये यूट्यूब पे देखें आप आप मिलेगा यूनाइटेड ब्रेक्स गिटार्स उसने ये गाना लिख दिया और पोस्ट कर दिया सुबह उठा तो एकदम से उसको कॉलें आने शुरू होगी इतनी मिलियन हिट्स इतनी मिलियन हिट्स इतनी मिलियन हिट्स अब यूनाइटेड एयर के ऊपर लोगों ने जाना छोड़ दिया टिकट्स इन्हें बंद कर दिया ये डिक्लाइनिंग रेवेन्यू देखे आपने किस तरह टिप डिक्लाइन कोई ट्रैवल ही नहीं करता था कहता है बल्कि एक जगह कहता है मैं ट्रैवल करने के लिए गया जब तो सारे के सारे उस लोगों ने इसको रिकगनाइज किया सिंगर को ना सारा का सारा जहाज के वहाँ जो लोग थे ना उन्होंने गाना गाना शुरू कर दिया यूनाइटेड ब्रेक्स के टार फिर कस्टमर सर्विस ने इसको कॉन्टेक्ट किया कि हम अब तुम्हारा गिटार क्या तुम्हें और भी पैसे देते हैं ठीक है तुम हमें जरा आके हमारे से गलती हो गई पहले मतलब रियली दे साइड के क्यों But the damage had already been बन एंड डन बाय वन कस्टमर विद स्मॉल एक्ट और उस बंदे को उन्हें समझा कि ये तो कुछ भी नहीं कर सकता होगा ना नो नो कस्टमर इज स्टेटिस्टिकली इनसिग्निफिकेंट एक बंदा किसी रेस्टोरेंट में कहीं जाके खराब खाना खाएगा वो दस को बताता है खराब मैंने खाया है ठीक है तो वो चीज ट्रेवल करती है 
तो वो ट्रैवल इतनी कर गई कि अच्छा वो बंदा अब जो डेविड कॉर्नल है वो दुनिया में कस्टमर सर्विस के ऊपर लेक्चर देता है क्या होता है अब मैं आप उसको एक वीडियो दिखाता हूँ आपको समझ आएगी बैकग्राउंड ये मैंने आपकी सारी स्लाइड जो है ना मैनेजमेंट साइंसिस के फोल्डर में अपलोड कर रहा हूँ गूगल ड्राइव पर जो भी हम पढ़ाते जाएंगे वो अपलोड होती जाएंगी और उसमें आज ये के केस स्टडी है ये कांडली आपने पढ़नी है एक वीडियो आपके साथ मैं शेयर कर रहा हूँ अभी ठीक है जी लाइट्स ऑफ कर देंगी सच सुनना है या कैमरे वाला सुनना है सच बड़ा कड़वा तो नहीं मुझे तो कोई इशू नहीं है यार मॉरल इशू कोई नहीं है एक दफा ना मैं मॉरल इशू पता मॉरल इशू पता है क्यों नहीं है एक एक दफा ना मेरी एक सॉरी ये बताना नहीं चाहिए बताना चाहिए कोई गर्लफ्रेंड थी तो उसने ना मेरे अबू को फोन कर दिया कुछ अरसे बाद ना तो नाराज हो गया पता नहीं क्या हुआ उसका चक्कर जो भी था वह जल्दी नाराज होती नहीं है लेकिन वो हो गई तो एनी वे अबू को फ़ोन कर दिया कि जी मैं जो है ना इरफान की वाइफ हूँ तो अबू ने कहा कि हाँ ठीक है बेटा बिल्कुल ठीक है आप आ जाओ घर आ जाओ तो कोई मसला नहीं है तो मैं उधर उस दिन ना अबू ने मुझे रिंग किया कहाँ मैं भी झूठ बोल दिया मैं ये काम कर रहा हूँ दफ्तर का ये वो वो कोई नहीं वापस आया ना तो लॉन में बैठे थे तो और से ना तो कहते हैं इरफान आओ बैठो मैं बैठ गया जी तो मैंने वो कहते हैं कि वो मुझे एक कॉल आई थी किसी की ना इस तरह की अच्छा मैंने ज़ाहिर अपने आप को बचाने के लिए नहीं जी वो कोई बॉस का मसला है ये वो है या किसी दोस्त का मसला है इस तरह का पाए वो एक सके मेरी तो देखते रहे फिर कहते हैं इरफान मैं तेरा प्यो हाँ तू जो कर रहे हैं बाज आ जाओ तो मैं कहना ही चाहता हूँ एक दफ़ा मैं नज़रों से गिर गया ना उसके बाद मैंने पीछे मुड़ के कभी नहीं देखा Thank you. 
with an airline. Could I have a show of hands, please? Anyone who has ever flown and had an airline experience that's negative or knows somebody that has. So it appears that we have uh, a lot in common. And uh, what I discovered with United Brakes Guitars was that you and I have a lot in common with e everybody in the world who has ever flown. And uh, I had the opportunity to vent my frustration in a way that I uh, was comfortable with as a songwriter. And it has had a profound effect on my career that was instantaneous and, uh, and I think, uh, unique. Uh, when I told this story, I basically told it one time. And there was a time in customer service where if you had a positive, negative, or a positive experience uh, with customer service, you would tell three friends. And if you had a negative one, you would tell 14. And uh, bad news has always traveled faster than good news. But uh, now things are off the rails and, and that's gone exponential. And uh, in my case, I basically told the story once with a video. And over 100 million people in the world are now familiar with this song. And uh, the YouTube hits are at, thank you, are at uh, 10 million, just about, between the three videos. And this relatability that we share fueled one of the, uh, the greatest uh, customer service complaint campaigns ever. So uh, I'm pleased to be here today to talk to you and, and share my story. I'm excited to hear what everybody else is saying. And uh, uh, in my experience, I had this problem, but United had to work to get these songs. It wasn't just a question that my guitar got broken and I got off the plane and said, well, I'm going to show you. I went through a customer service maze for over nine months where I tried to get some ass assistance and I was told by real people, virtual people, letters, phones, that basically it was my fault that this had happened. And uh, I finally spoke to a customer service rep named Miss Earlwig in Chicago. And uh, we had an email exchange back and forth. And she said, uh, it's your fault. You didn't uh, file the claim within 24 hours. There's nothing we can do. And I'm not going to return any more emails to you. So uh, as a stream of consciousness, I said, OK, Mr. Elwig, you don't have to re respond to me. I'll keep you tabbed on the progress. But as if I were a lawyer, I might sue you. But I'm a songwriter, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to write three songs. And I don't know why I said three, because as soon as I hit sent, I think I said, that's going to be a lot of work. <laughs> but I did. I said I was going to do three, and I, I committed to it. And I said, I will keep you tabbed, and eventually there will be a video come out, and I will let you know, and hopefully you will tune in to watch it, because my goal will be to try and get one million hits in the year with these three videos combined. And uh, I said, hopefully you will watch it, and together we can get to one million that much quicker. And uh, I said, the only thing that concerns me is what rhymes with Earlwig right now. And so uh, seven months went by, 
And sure enough, uh, I called some friends along the way that were great musicians. I said, United broke my guitar. I want to do a song about it. And they said, great, I'll, do it. I'll play with you for free. I called some friends in the film industry in Halifax, and I said, these guys broke my guitar. I want to do a funny video about it. And they said, we'll, we'll give you a great video for free. And so uh, I'm a volunteer firefighter in Halifax. Uh, and so we went to the fire hall, and we shot all the daytime scenes of the video that you were watching. And uh, I had $150 in my budget, and uh, that cost... Uh, or that was spent on mustaches and sombreros and lunch for my friends and uh, th there were no other costs involved because everybody volunteered but there was a high level of professionalism in, in the production and uh, come uh, July 6th I put the video up on YouTube at about 11.30 at night and I went to bed with six hits and uh, I thought, I had watched it about six times and I thought each hit is mine I thought this is going to take a long time but I'm going to get to a million if it uh, kills me and I found out later that YouTube doesn't work that way, that one hit, it's, it's based on an IP address, not on how many times you watch it. So uh, the numbers are actually a little more impressive than just uh, 10 million views. But um, I woke up the next morning and I had 300 hits and I was ecstatic. I thought, this is a great start. And I called my friends and they, and they said, yeah, this is awesome, but this might peter off. And uh, by noon that day, there were 5,000 hits. And by uh, YouTube has a has a counter that sometimes stalls, so the you're not getting real time results. But somebody had sent this video to the Consumerist website, and by five o'clock that night, while YouTube was showing 5,000 hits, the Consumerist was showing 25,000 hits. And uh, I had done a story uh, in the local Halifax newspaper called the Chronicle Herald, and they had put it up on their website before the paper came out. Uh, the next day and uh, so I, I had a gig that night my brother and I Don and Sons of Maxwell we drove two hours outside Halifax and we played our show and I got off stage and there was a cell phone message waiting for me from the LA Times who had picked up on the story from the Chronicle Herald and uh, and they wanted to know uh, some of the answers of what was going on and so I gave them this that they put in an online story the next morning that's when things went absolutely crazy uh, you know, I operate a, a small business at home. Uh, I don't have an agent or a manager or anything. I'm completely independent. And uh, the phone started ringing from news agencies, big and small. And uh, I got an email from CNN. And I was debriefed, and it was on that night. Uh, I remember clearly it was one of the defining moments uh, when I realized this could be something big, where I was doing a, what I considered to be a large regional Canadian television show talking about this. And just before I was, I was going to go on during a commercial, the co-host came running up and said, oh my god, you're on the Situation Room with Wolf Blitzer right now. And uh, sure enough, I watched it when I got home. And it was just too bizarre. It was surreal. I, I saw uh, a story on Barack Obama and the Pope, and there in the middle of that were my friends, the three amigos, singing their guts out with their sombreros on. And uh, and Wolf Blitzer, I think he, I think he might have danced a little, and he was smiling a little, and uh, and so I thought this is this is something really interesting, and uh, this could be really big, and sure enough, it went completely viral, and uh, so that was Wednesday. Uh, by Friday, I had reached the one million, and by Sunday, it had uh, gone to two million. A week later, it was at three million, and today it's that one video sitting at 8.25 million hits, and. Uh, the second video in the trilogy is at a million, and the third one, which, which is just released, is uh, chugging away at nearly 100,000. And, and so when you combine them all, it's, uh, it's been a real experience. Uh, I, it occurred to me early on, uh, when it was going viral, that initially I had no plan what we were going to do. I was just responding when United wasn't going to do anything. And uh, so I put the video up, but it occurred to me when things were really going crazy that um, that I had an opportunity, maybe, instead of just voicing my own complaint, that this, this experience could compel a major uh, airline and a major uh, company in the world to change the way they think about how they deal with their customers. And uh, it, essentially, that has happened. Uh, in the first two weeks, life inside a media frenzy for an independent musician without a publicist and a team uh, can be a little crazy. Uh, to make matters more interesting, my wife and I had a baby boy. He was three months old at the time, our first one. So we were tired all the time and trying to make sense of what it's like to be parents. And uh, uh, the office was crazy. We, ex we doubled the size of our office by getting a two-line phone and uh, got a card table as an extra desk and, uh, and I realized we were officially overwhelmed when my wife was uh, answering a phone call, doing an email and breastfeeding our son at the same time. And uh, 
uh, I had a good friend named Julian Marintet who left his job, took a leave of absence, absence for a couple of weeks. And we were, we were driving like madmen all over Halifax, driving to a TV station to do a live satellite feed while I'm, I'm taking two calls. Uh, there was a point where we were driving somewhere and he took a call from Bob Taylor from Taylor Guitars. And as a guitar player, that's a cool call you want to take. And he started talking to him. And next thing I knew, he had, he had hung up on him. And I said, you just hung up on Bob Taylor. And he says, yeah, but I got Letterman on the line. I said, I said okay, okay, well, call Bob back and take that call. Because that was the, the week where everything was possible, where everybody, uh, uh, there was talk of going on Letterman. There was that same week, I almost opened for Paul McCartney in Halifax. And so big things were happening. And uh, it was a really exciting time. Interesting things continue to happen, but that was the when it was really going viral. That was uh, that was crazy. Um, the effects on my career, as you might expect, uh, those things have happened. The CD sales, online sales have uh, increased exponentially right away. Uh, our mother, Sharon, does all of our, our uh, physical distribution, and uh, so I had asked her how the sales were going. She says, "You got to come over and see this." So I went over, and, and there on the couch, she had. Uh, Prepackaged CDs ready to be shipped all over the world, piled 10 high, two deep, all the full length of the sofa. And I said, this is incredible. She goes, this is our third sofa full. And I said, this business is going crazy. I got to buy you a sectional sofa. And so uh, the online sales, the CD sales were great. And the music business, though, ironically, has been kind of quick to downplay or completely ignore what's happened because the song, they want to say the song is quirky or uh, it, some other people have said it's, it, you know, it's, it's a YouTube phenomenon, but it's not a legitimate uh, musical experience. And it's kind of like a cat that flushes the toilet and you see it and you forget it. Except people haven't forgotten this because it's a lot bigger than that. And it's a legitimate music experience because what do you think happens when 100 million people have heard about this song? They could probably check it out on YouTube and, and that's what's happened. I had my website up at the front and the back of that video. And a lot of people have come to check out my that song in particular. And then they discovered that I have a whole career, 20 years of playing music and writing songs that aren't like that, and CDs to sell, and music to offer, and sh shows to play. And, uh, and traditionally, the way the music industry has evolved has been that there's been the artist trying to reach the fans, and in the middle, there's now a multi-billion dollar music industry that artists have to navigate and somehow compromise themselves or give up portions of their career to the music industry to get to the end user. And I kind of liken it to the Wright brothers when they took their first flight. They didn't do any barrel rolls or anything when they, when they came out of this first flight. What they did that was unique was they went from point A to point B without touching the ground or, or sailing on the water. And I, other people uh, could have monetized this better or done something different, but this is one of the first times that somebody in the music business had no team around them, no, not one single music industry personality that was able to go from virtual obscurity to reaching millions of people with their music and introducing them. And the results have been that uh, I have a brand now and fans around the world for music that isn't United Breaks Guitars, and uh, uh, it's, it's quite unique. I've also been happy to say that I've, I've been commissioned to write songs for really interesting projects that might not have happened otherwise. Uh, one of the ones I'm working on right now is a, a very cool project to reclaim the bodies of three um, servicemen who crashed in Antarctica in 1946. They're buried under ice now because it's been snowing and uh, freezing for the last 70 years. And uh, so they're buried, I think, over 100 feet below the ice, and there's a project where they're going to bring these servicemen back. I think it's, it's a great project. It's what I would call on the right side of right. I'm happy to be associated with that, and I'm, I'm trying to write a song that will help bring awareness to that. And uh, this whole idea of right side of right is something that uh, I've developed. There's a website now, in addition to the music, because my career isn't about music anymore completely. There's a whole other side. And uh, so I've developed a website called therightsideofright.com. And that website brings people together. Uh, I'm inviting people with bad customer service experiences to share them. But I'm also inviting people that have had great customer service experiences to share those as well, because uh, it's not just enough to bring a company down. It's uh, a, the best learning tool sometimes, how to do it right. And uh, this website is exciting. It's evolving. I don't know exactly where it's going to go, but it's a, it's a place where solutions, I'm hoping, will, will uh, occur. I've also been doing speaking. Um, I'm here today, I guess, partially as a speaker, and it's a new thing to me. I'm, 
hopefully getting better at it as I go along and uh, and I'm learning that what I'm talking about is changing all the time because I'm learning what's gone on in the last six months because uh, I've been oblivious I, I guess to the ramifications of uh, and the implications of what's what's gone on but one of the things uh, that I had a chance to do was to go and speak sort of as an advocate in Washington on Capitol Hill and uh, for a thing called the passengers right stakeholders meeting for uh, primarily for people that have been on planes for long periods of time on tarmacs. Uh, I went to speak on the issue of property, but it was pretty cool that I was in the Rayburn building on Capitol Hill speaking at a congressional hearing, just like the Iran-Contra type of thing, except not quite. And, uh, and I actually got to sing my testimony, which I'm told never happens in this thing. So I gave my testimony and I sang my testimony on Capitol Hill. And uh, while I was there, a sort of a light went on and I kind of learned what all this is really about because uh, there was this, a CEO of a major American airline, an ex-CEO, and he was apparently on the side of the, of the stakeholders, but I didn't understand that and I wasn't the only one because Senator Barbara Boxer, who was sponsoring this bill, she wasn't there to hear him speak, but she came back in and went up, uh, up one side of him and down the other because she thought he was against the bill and he had to say, Senator, I'm with you. And one of the things that he said in his speech was, that uh, the issue of people being stuck on tarmacs for long periods of time happens so infrequently that in essence it's statistically insignificant from, uh, com as compared to all of the planes that take off on time. And I realized that this person had been in business, very successful for a long time, but didn't understand what social media was about or where customer service was going. And uh, uh, I've thought more about that since and it's... Uh, it's an, it's an incredible thing that every big company should now be getting on board, that no customer is statistically insignificant. Big companies have been thinking about doing it mostly right most of the time. That's been the model, where you try to get it mostly right most of the time, and when you don't, you try and ride it out. And, and they're working on that old uh, negative experience tells 14 people model. Well, that's not the way it is anymore. And I think uh, big companies that want to survive have to adapt their thinking. They're going to have to say, we have to try and get it right every time for every customer, knowing that that's never going to happen. But people that strive that way, they think if a customer has a bad experience, that's a bad day, and that has to be solved. And if you have that philosophy going in, you're more likely going to have a recovery position and a recovery plan. And uh, uh, so going forward, that's, that's what I'm thinking about uh, in my own business, and I try to tell other people as well. It's very important. I will... Uh, just finish with, with a little story that uh, I thought was kind of cute that uh, uh, there were some people, I got this on a blog, that uh, someone was flying at JFK and they got off their plane, they got on the shuttle and they were with a bunch of strangers and they were traveling from one terminal to the other and somehow somebody saw United or something spurred them to start singing United Breaks Guitars and the whole shuttle started singing along with them. And. Uh, it kind of goes with what I started off saying, that you and I and everybody else in the world who has flown has something in common. And the people that were on that shuttle would have probably gone through a ride like that every day and never talked to anybody else, but it, they were united by the fact that they all have property, they all uh, respect their property and they expect big companies to respect it as well. And uh, if you Google uh, or Bing United Breaks Guitars, you put that phrase in quotes, you'll find 16 million references on the internet today. And that, to me, says that no customer is statistically insignificant. And uh, I thank you for your time. Thank you, Samuel. So, like on So, so basically, this is all about, if you have logic customer relationship, ki, so I think this is good enough. कि आपको पता होना चाहिए ये क्यों important है किस लिए important है और हमें क्यों ख्याल रखना है एक बंदा ने पूरी की पूरी airline को हिला दिया छोटे से step से मैंने एक आपसे बात की थी ना not all of you will be able to do great things in life ना but all of you can do small things in a great way उसका मसला ये कि फॉर एग्जांपल ये रजिस्टर है उसको ऐसे फेंक भी सकता हूं मैं इसको प्रॉपर्ली ऐसे प्लेस भी कर सकता हूं छोटी सी चीज है ना और दुनिया में जो चेंजेस लोग लाए हैं हम बड़े-बड़े लोगों का नाम तो लेते रहते हैं 
کہ انہوں لوگوں نے چینجز لائے ہیں قائد اعظم کا لے لیں گے نیلسن منڈیلا کا لے لیں گے مدر ٹیل لیکن آپ دیکھو کہ دنیا میں ریولوشنز اور چینجز آئی ہیں کچھ ایک انڈیویجول نارمل کے کچھ کرنے سے مدر ٹیریسا ایک نارمل خاتون تھی اس نے جا کے ان لیپریسی والے بندوں کے ساتھ کام کرنا شروع کر دیا ٹھیک ہے اس سے کسی نے ایک دفعہ پوچھا کہ تم یہ جتنا کام کریے بڑا چھوٹا کام ہے تو وہ کہتی ہے کہ this what I am doing is just a drop in the ocean but the ocean will be less one drop if I don't do it اس نے یہ کیا تینمنس کیر میں چائنہ میں یہ پرو ڈیموکریسی ورکنگ سٹارٹ ہوئی انہوں نے مارا چائنیز فورسز نے تو اگلے دن ایک بندہ آپ ویڈیو دیکھیں گے تینمنس کیر کی اس میں ٹینک کے سامنے کھڑا ہو گیا اس کو ٹینک مین کہتے ہیں چینج آگئی ریولوشن آگیا فرانس میں جو کوئن جایا کرتی تھی کہتی نہیں کہ کیک کیوں نہیں کھاتے لوگ تو وہ جاتے تھے تو اشرفیاں پھینکتے تھے لوگوں پہ تو وہاں ایک بندے نے اشرفی پھینکی نا جب اس نے کوئن نے تو اس نے وہ اشرفی اٹھا کے واپس پھینک دی اس سے ریولوشن ایسا سٹارٹ ہویا کہ پوری کی پوری ان کی جو کراؤن فیملی تھی اس کو انہوں نے مار دیا فرنچ ریولوشن آگیا ہماری ہسٹری میں اگر آپ نون پولیٹیکلی ہو کے سوچیں کچھ انسیڈنٹ ٹرگر کرتے ہیں چھوٹے سے ایوب کے ٹائم کے اوپر چینی کی قیمت میں تھوڑا سا اضافہ ہو گیا تھوڑا سا ایوب خان کی گورنمنٹ فیل ڈاؤن ایسے ہی ہوا پچاس پیسے کا اضافہ ہوا تھا سو یہ دیار انسیڈنسز جو ہمارے لیڈرز کا بھی آپ دیکھ لیں کہ ان کے ہوتے ہوئے بھی زیا کے ٹائم پہ اوجری کیمپ کا آ گیا you know there were small small incidences which took place اور اس میں important چیز یہ ہے کہ آپ کو power of one پہ believe ہونا چاہیے کہ we all have the power to change the world آپ کا ایک چھوٹا سا ویڈیو آپ اپلوڈ کرتے ہیں روزانہ ہی ہوتا ہے اس طرح وہ نہیں ایک ویڈیو آپ کا آیا تھا یہاں یہ میں ہوں یہ کون ہے اور یہاں پارٹی ہو رہی ہے آپ دیکھیں وہ such a small video small clip she has become a celebrity right right drama bhi 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 aari isi tarah chote chote acts aap ke hote hain aap wo karne hain lag jayen agar right side of the right usne word use kiya na right or left hai na hum kehte hain right right side of the right to aap ye steps kare to aap ho sakta hai you can be the one person who changed the history Florence Nightingale ki example bhi hai she changed normal khatoon thi she changed history ایک موک تھا میں نے اس کی پرچہ شاید آپ کو لاسٹ ٹائم دکھائی تھی ویتنام میں جس نے اپنے آپ کو آگ لگا دی تھی ایک بیٹھ کے ایک جگہ پہ نا بس اپنے آگ لگا امریکہ ہار گیا جانا پڑا ایک چیز بڑی چیز بھی گیا تو یہ ہے پہلے جو فورت لائٹن گیا تھی مدر پریسیا تھی جو پاکی جو لوگ تھے اس پر در اور لائف ہاں ٹرائنگ ٹو اچیف سامتھنگ سوشل میڈیا نا ایکسپو یہ بہت زیادہ ہے آپ کے خیاس میں جو ہمیں روزانہ کیسز اسالٹ کے آ رہے ہوتے ہیں وہ میں نے اسالٹ ریپ کیسز یہ اس کے بھی ساری چیزیں جو آ رہی ہیں اور لوگ پکڑے جا رہے ہیں یہ کیوں کہا رہے ہیں یہ آپ کا خیال ہے پہلے نہیں ہو رہا تھا یہ منٹو نے آج سے کتنے سال پہلے لکھے تھے منٹو کے افسانوں میں کیا لکھتا تھا وہ جس کو فاشی کہتے تھے تو وہ کیا لکھا کرتا تھا تو وہ ہمارا کلچر یہ تھا آج آپ ویڈیوز پہ دیکھ رہے ہیں what you are seeing وہ اس کا لوجک کیا تھی منٹو پہ ہم بات اسے کریں گے کہ چیزوں کو برائی کو خرابی کو ایک طریقہ ہوتا ہے کہ کارپٹ کے نیچے رگا دیں آپ نظر ہی نہ آئے سب ٹھیک ہے ایک چیز ہوتا ہے معاشرے کو اس کا چہرہ دکھائیں تاکہ اس سے چینج آئے معاشرے کے اندر تو آج کل سوشل میڈیا اس وقت سے پاپولر ہے ایک چھوٹی سی چیز پوری دنیا میں ٹرابل کر جاتی ہاں بول سو ہاں اسی طرح کے چیزیں تو آج کا جی کسٹمر ریلیشن شپ پہ آج یہی لیکچر ہے تو انشاءاللہ نیکس ٹائم ملیں گے اور کوئی چیز اینیتنگ ایلس کیا تم نے